Lord, oh my God, my Savior, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your strength, your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, my Lord. We thank you for where you have taken us from and where you are taking us to. We thank you for your promises of protection. Come to you, my Lord Jesus, at this moment, my Lord, seeking for clearance, my Lord Jesus, seeking my Lord for clarity, seeking my Lord Jesus for resistance, my Lord Jesus, away from the enemy, for power, my Lord, and strength, my Lord, in our weakest points. Guide us, my Lord Jesus, through your words, my Lord, and uplift us, encourage us, my Lord, that we have an understanding, my Lord, of our faith. Without you, we are nothing, though with you we are capable because you are able. It is in your name we pray, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So as we see, still going to record for the night. We are not, I guess in the rain, probably stopped a lot of people or got a lot of people in bed. But it will not stop. What's going on, Brother Ines? Uh, we finished off last week's study on chapter 1 and 2. We just began the book of Acts. And as we know, the book of Acts is basically detailing the steps along the route of the disciples, the apostles, after the death of Jesus, understanding that their mission was to go out into the whole world, go out in all the world and preach the gospel, having an understanding of what it is and how it is to preach the gospel. So we are encouraged when we hear our brothers, hear our sisters, and we hear about the individuals and the way in which they display their faith. So this book of Acts is basically giving us a clear insight on how challenging it may be and as well how they delivered, how they were delivered through all of the problems that came that way. So it's a, it's a great book, especially for us that we are seeking direction, seeking purpose in our faith and our walk. So let us continue now today in Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him as did John and said, look at us. So this man was lame from birth, meaning that he could not walk, meaning his legs were basically, he could not use his legs. And this was from birth, born like this. And this is a grown man. So it got to a point in time where they just, family or friends or anybody that he basically would ask or beg would put him in front of this gate, this beautiful gate, um, where individuals that were coming in and out of the synagogue, in and out of the temple, and he would ask for alms, which is basically, in a sense, asking for donations, asking for anything that anybody had, whether food, drink, whatever this person could give, he was basically there just asking. And this was his daily routine, going out to basically tug on the hearts of believers. Um, so... This day, he seen Peter and he seen John about to go into the temple and he asked to receive alms. And Peter, verse four, directed his gaze at him as did John and said to him, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive alms. <clears throat> expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, mind you, this is a man that's never walked before, but he's obviously watched since he was a child. Kids jump. He's watched his parents walk. He's watched individuals that walk in and out of that gate that would leave food or leave anything with him walk. And now this man, at this very moment, for one, was asking for food because basically this is just another day and I'm going to make sure I can survive. And Peter and John looked at him and said, look at us and say, I ain't got no silver, I ain't got no gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
and he took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately again his feet and his ankles were made strong so at that moment this man that which was weak this man that which could not walk could not do anything started to regain strength and started to basically have mobility he started to be able to move on his own his ankles move on his own his legs and as these two brothers that he's never seen before put their arms around under his under his arms and basically started to lift him up he started to feel the strength in his feet and leaping mm -hmm. up he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them so you can only imagine he's probably never even been inside that temple so he's entered into the temple with them walking and leaping and praising god and all the people saw him walking and praising god and recognized him at that moment as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms and they were filled with wonder and amazement what had happened to him <clears throat> why he clung to peter and john all the people utterly astounded ran together to them in the portico called solomon's and when peter saw it he addressed the people. So if we remember in chapter two, when the Holy Spirit came down upon the individuals that were in that room after they watched the resurrection and watched Jesus ascend into heaven, they received the Holy Spirit and they started to speak in tongues and they were speaking in many tongues and people from all different nations, all that spoke all different languages came up to this to this house where they heard like, you know, these hundreds of people just praising God in all these different tongues. And they were saying, how are they speaking in our language? Like we know all these guys, these guys are from around the way. Like how are they all speaking different languages? How is it that we are out here are able to understand everything that they are saying? So at that moment, one guy came and basically said, I don't worry about them. They drunk. And Peter addressed the crowd and Peter began to speak to the crowd and started to tell them that everything that which was promised from Moses, when Moses announced and said that he will have, there will be one that is like you guys, um, that basically comes from the Hebrews that will be ri ri risen up as the Messiah. Um, he spoke of Jesus. So even Moses prophesied about Jesus. Isaiah prophesied about Jesus. David prophesied about Jesus before the coming of Jesus. And this is what Peter was beginning to tell them at that moment, basically telling them, you guys crucified he that which we were waiting on, he that which they spoke about from the early testaments. So with that being said, I say that to say that now Peter is basically, as Jesus claimed to be the rock that the church will be built upon, Peter is now about to speak to a crowd again. So Peter saw it and he addressed the crowd, addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety uh, we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilot when he decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and ask for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this, we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in presence of you all, in the presence of you all. Amen. Mm -hmm. Something that we have to take something that we have to take from this and as we are basically watching these apostles grow into their own shoes right because they just spent three and a half years walking with jesus and jesus was the main one that was you know doing all of these signs and wonders and healing and casting out of evil spirits so now these men are beginning to walk in their own and starting to be able to step on their own faith and actually seeing and realizing all that which they are capable of doing so with that, one thing that we have to understand as we read through these scriptures in the book of Acts is that everything that which they declare, they declare it in the name of Jesus. So that's something that we need to understand when we pray. And at the end of our prayers, we say, in the name of Jesus, amen. 
Jesus himself says that anything that you ask the father in my name, you shall receive. So we are seeing and watching these disciples, these apostles do this firsthand. Everything that they do, they say and they declare it in the name of Jesus, because the name of Jesus is what makes demons shudder. The name of Jesus is what makes demons run. The name of Jesus is what heals our parents, is what heals our brothers and our sisters. The name of Jesus is what delivers us and gives us grace. And we find mercy and we find peace in the name of Jesus. So he is basically declaring to all of these individuals and telling them that this man, Jesus, that you guys killed, this is the same reason that we are able to make this man that you've been walking by these streets and walking in front in and out of this temple for years, You've seen this man paralyzed for all this time. The way that we have been able to just speak to him and lift him up is by the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance. So you see, this is why when we are asking God for grace and we ask God for forgiveness and we ask God for his patience with us, God understands our hearts. We have to also be understanding of individuals that live in ignorance. You cannot get upset with people that are living a certain type of lifestyle. You have to be patient with them. You have to be strong because one day they will come and they will rely on you. And if you ever were a one that closed the door in their face, told them, I'm tired of working with you, I'm, I give up on you, they will always remember that. And that same grace is how they'll feel that God shows his grace. If you as a representative of God do not have patience to work with individuals, you are misrepresenting God. So understand that this is something else that we are taking from these brothers, the patience that they have. Because listen, they are speaking to the individuals that killed Jesus right now, that at least applauded the death of Jesus the individuals that which Pilot gave an option and said, hey, I can give you one of the two, you can free. And they chose to free a murderer as opposed to freeing Jesus, but, right, Barabbas. So to continue on again, verse uh, 17, and now brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers, but what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that is Christ would suffer he does fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. And now he's going to go into the prophets that spoke. Moses said, the Lord God would raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel, those who came after him also proclaim these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and then your offspring shall all the fa families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. So. In the times that which Moses spoke, in the times that which Samuel spoke, in the times that which all of the prophets of old, Ezekiel, Isaiah, they spoke these times and they talked about this coming of a prophet, this coming of the Messiah, this coming of the one that which is to be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. The people that were in those times did not understand what these brothers were saying. They just heard and they was okay. They were understood that, hey, this prophet then told us when it's going to rain. This prophet then told us that if we pray, God will do this. And everything that he ever said is done. So even though we are not going to be uh, alive to see when this Messiah comes, we believe it. And this is why it's preached in all of the temples. So this is just a declaration that Peter is doing here telling these brothers and sisters that you guys have read the scriptures and heard and know there is a Messiah to come. You know 
that there is one that is supposed to be promised that and it is going to come from amongst us. And what Peter is trying to basically bring to the forefront is that this man came and you guys did not recognize him and you guys killed him. Literally, you guys asked and you seek and you crucified him. This was the one that we were waiting on and you guys killed him. So this is just an understanding that when the scripture tells us that the rock or the stone that the builders rejected became a cornerstone, this is just what he is saying. So we understand that Jesus was not just a prophet. We understand that Jesus was not just a man. Though there are many religions that say so, there are religions as Islam and Muslims that when they speak of Jesus, they attest that Jesus is a prophet. They recognize him as a prophet. They do not recognize him as the Messiah. Yet we understand biblically that all of the prophets spoke about Jesus that was to come and the lineage and the birthrights that Jesus had and all that which was promised through Bethlehem that Jesus would arrive and everything happened, and we understand all the things that Jesus has done. So we understand that Jesus was both man and divine, part man, part divine. We understand that Jesus is God. And all of these things are declaring this. So these men are now in an understanding that, dang, we killed the Messiah. So this is what Paul, this is what Peter is basically trying to just get across to these brothers letting them understand that all that which they were ignorant about was brought forward to them. Anybody yeah. have any questions? Uh, no, no, no. Hmm? Any questions, any thoughts before we go to the next chapter? Acts 4. Um, for the people that's here, have you guys ever heard that it was said that Jesus was just a prophet? You guys aware that some religions just recognize Jesus as a prophet? Yeah, I've been told that yeah. by a lot of other people who, um, like you say, Muslims. Um, what was another one? Um, Islam. Yeah, I think it was Islam. Oh, I'm trying to remember who did I hear from. I think the uh, Hebrew Israelites. I believe they 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 recognize Jesus as God, but most of those different religions that which do not that read like the Torah that don't really read the actual Holy Bible, they recognize yeah. Jesus as a prophet. What he fall under as God technically, since I thought. God came through him, right? Say it one more time. I thought God did come through Jesus. So shouldn't he be considered God? Yes, Jesus is God. Yes, sir. So, but you just said that he wasn't. You saying that the Israelites is like say that he is. So was you agreeing with Israelites? Or you wasn't agreeing with them? I'm sorry for the noise in the background. I'm at I'm at my shop at the moment. No, no, you're good. Not a, like I was saying that the Hebrew Israelites believe, from what I understand, I believe they believe that Jesus is God as well. Like they believe okay. that he was not just a prophet. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just I'm just speaking that regard, not not in regards to everything else that they say, but there okay. are sects that like believe in the Holy Bible. Those that which read the Holy Bible understand that Jesus is God. But those that which read it from the Torah or that read from the different books that Muslims read from, they recognize Jesus as just being a prophet. Mm. Okay, okay, makes sense. But does anybody have any ideas? Like, why do y'all feel that that is a a strong point that these different religions stand on? Because other people came after Jesus, right? And that's why they think that Jesus is, is a prophet and not God are like not God's firstborn son or lastborn son. Mm -hmm. What's the what is the God name that is it? You said was it Jew Muslims Muslims? You said it was. I know they 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 look at they look up to another person, right? Yeah, my, my, uh, Muhammad or yeah. 
I think it's, I think it was that's after Jesus, right? He came after Jesus, right? Yeah, and this two thousand years, two thousand years later, or something like that. Um, I don't really know all the details, but I know that they said that this man like was one that which couldn't even speak, um, uh, not speak. He couldn't even read or something like that, and and it was given to him. Oh, it, it's I'd have to do more research on it. I I, I yeah. tend to not really um divulge into all of those different conversations. <laughs> I do know, you know what I'm saying. I, I'm I'm aware enough of how Correct. they stand on things and. Yeah. How things go over that, and but that's that's yeah. why I think that they don't think Jesus is the you know the 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 Messiah, the last, yeah, the Messiah, the last one sent before God returns, you know, because nah, that's not why I believe, but that's why the other religions, because you asked a question and I'm trying to answer it, but I don't no, know. I'm with you. I'm with you because it basically because as it says, Jesus is basically the last prophet. Correct. Jesus was the last prophet, the last high priest. Christian wise. Christian wise. Yeah, exactly. So if that is what's said in regards to like Christianity basically being the way of life is not really a religion, individuals that which are religious are going to fight that because they are going to speak of their prophets, their um individuals that which receive the word from God directly, and they want to make sure they stand on that. So mm. they have to basically diminish the name and regards of Jesus. Okay, that makes sense. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's clear to see that, like, there's a lot of politics in religion, and yes. what we have to understand is that, like, as we've just finished the book of Mark, we understand that Jesus was killed not only because he was, uh, as they said, saying blasphemous things, but it was more so the political aspect, because they had the say that Jesus was um oh he's out here saying he's the king of the Jews so he's they went to Caesar I mean Pharaoh and told like I mean Caesar yeah they went and told Caesar uh, this man is saying that he's the king of the Jews like they had to bring these different false reports because politically he was gaining too much recognition and too much power because people were following him that's why they came and tested him about taxes like okay do we pay our taxes if we're Christians like they just tried to catch Jesus and so much to bring the political aspect into it because all of this stuff at the end of the day comes back to politics. Politics is what killed Jesus. Mm. <laughs> so what do you think his response was when they was asking him that? Do you think that he gave him a clear answer or do you think he said it had nothing to do with it? In, what, what, so what question? About, like, like paying taxes, you know? No, he, that's gave, like, he, gave, he gave the perfect answer. Like that's one of the best um, quotes in the Bible. It's the be best comeback in the Bible where he said, okay, bring me basically a quarter, right? Like in their regard, like bring me a denarii. And he says, whose image is on it? And they were like, okay, it's Caesar. And he was like, okay, well give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is for God. So he gave them that answer. Like this oh, okay, that's basically tough. has, like this dollar has whatever president, like give unto the president his money and give to God what is for God. Correct. He so separated. A simple answer is yes. He told them that they're still responsible to pay their taxes, and then they were still responsible to pay the uh, like no donate that ten percent. Yeah, but basically, when he, saying, yes. when he was saying give unto God with his guys, he wasn't even talking about tithing. He was saying like your life, because we are supposed to serve God with our mind, soul, body, and spirit. So those taxes, yeah. those dollars, yeah, give that, pay that unto Caesar what is for Caesar, but give to God. What is God. Yeah. And if you have given your life to God, then you give your life to God and walk purposely. Hold on, let me step outside because they they it's getting kind of loud. Let me meet my microphone in a second. But any is everybody else um anybody else got any thoughts on why or y'all agree, disagree, and why they most religious claim Jesus as just being a prophet? Mm -hmm. I don't understand why they do it. Is that what you were explaining? No, I'm just asking if you guys had any thoughts or did you know that other religions basically uh, look at Jesus as just being a prophet? Yeah, they think Allah is basically who Jesus is to say. Or the Islam people? Well, no, Allah is God. So who? Oh, Muhammad, I'm tripping Muhammad. Yeah, but that's not Jesus, it's a totally different person. Yeah, I'm saying wait, 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 wait. they put them in put Muhammad in Jesus's place basically. Right, right. Like yeah, Correct. he was just a man. 
correct. Hey, I got a question for Pastor. He said Allah is God, but um, what what somebody told me his name was Jehovah. Yeah, the Bible actually says that too. The God God has many names. Like he has El Shaddai, um, Elohim. Like there's many different names because when they would give these names, it would be at a certain time. Like the God that delivered me, or a woman that would say the God that basically gave me. Uh, I was barren, couldn't have children, and I was able to have children, and she gave him a name. But all were basically to God, the God of gods, the King of kings. Mm. Okay. Because God himself said, when speaking to Moses, I am. Like, literally, yes. that's his name, I am. Yes, correct, correct, correct. Amen. All right, so let's continue on in chapter four. And as they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. So this is something that I want you guys to keep in account as well, is that the disciples and apostles are still in Jerusalem at this time. Um, Jesus told them to not leave Jerusalem until they basically they received the Holy Spirit and they received word to move. But they were supposed to stay in Jerusalem until further notice. That was the last thing that he told them. So this is just us understanding the time placement and where they are. They are still in Jerusalem at this moment doing these works. So those same people that killed Jesus happened in Jerusalem and they are still there in Jerusalem doing his work. So, and as they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them. Remember, these are the same individuals that arrested Jesus. Now arrested um, Peter and John. And they put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed. And the number of the men came to about 5,000 at that time. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Anas, Anas the high priest, and Caphias, Caphias, whatever, and John and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed let it be known to all of you and to all the people of israel that by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom you crucified whom god raised from the dead by him this man is standing before you well amen mm -hmm. so we understand these are the same individuals that was like i right, we killed jesus and then Remember, um, the two guards that were covered, that were at the tomb guarding the tomb of Jesus because the Pharisees said, hey, we need two people to watch because he was saying that he was going to rise on the third day. So we have to make sure that his uh, disciples don't come and try to steal his body and go around telling people that he was resurrected. So we understand that those two guards fell asleep and woke up and seen the angel of God and ran back to tell the Pharisees what happened, that this man real deal, real deal resurrected. And the Pharisees told these men to not go out and tell anyone what they heard and paid them in order to not go out and tell people that Jesus actually resurrected as he said he was going to. So them thinking that they've done everything they could, it's all good. They thought that since they killed Jesus, all of these apostles and disciples probably scattered and ran. But the fact oh. that they, on one second, but the fact that they are still out here seeing these people, these same disciples preaching the same stuff that Jesus was preaching, they hot now, you know? Go ahead. Um. So I was going to say, like, so this is why the people are blind now. In what regards? Like, in, in regards to, um, when they said, oh, um, they don't believe that Jesus came back yet. Yes, yes, the Bible actually says that as well. I mean, that's why a lot of Jews, 
if you ever have a conversation with the Jews, and I'm talking about like the white Jews, they don't believe in Jesus. Like their religion doesn't believe in Jesus either. They, mm. they they recognize him as being a great man. They recognize that he did many miracles, but they do not believe that he was the Messiah. Yeah, there's a lot going on on the other side, man. So it's very important for us to be aware to understand why Jesus was killed. And I'm telling you guys, politically, it was that was the biggest, that was the major factor. And still to this day, we're going to see why it's so uh, impactful on a political sense because these men are afraid of the power that which is garnered by individuals, which we will see will start selling their means in order to build a new community to live apart, basically creating a new state. You know, when, when the next y'all gonna create laws like you guys are not going to pay your tithes to our temple so all of this is politics it's politics mm -hmm. and when they had set them in the midst they inquired by what power and peter answered filled with the holy spirit by jesus christ of nazareth whom you crucified whom god raised from the dead verse 11 this jesus is the stone that was rejected by you the builders. Why does he say you, the builders? The Sadducees, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the scribes are recognized as the voices of God. They are the ones that when you go to the synagogue, you go to learn in the temple. These are the men that are teaching you about God. They are the builders. They are building people up. So this stone, Jesus is the stone that you guys rejected. You, the builders which has become the actual cornerstone. So you guys were trying to leave this out of it, but the whole building will fall because everything that you were building these individuals up for was to have faith in the Messiah that was to come. And he came and was rejected by you. So again, verse 11, this Jesus is a stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven, given among men by which we must be saved. Mm -hmm. Again, this is the power of, of the name Jesus. Not only the man, just the name. The name today heals individuals that have ever had those dreams that you feel like you are being, what they call? Paralysis. Yeah, paralysis. And you feel something's heavy on you. The biggest remedy to that is literally screaming Jesus. Your tongue is heavy. Your mouth can't even open. But the Jesus starts to come out and you start to find strength. Mm -hmm. Demons run from the name of Jesus. So we have to be faithful in that. Like when we say the name of Jesus, this is why, you know, I don't go into like, you know, people that say they use the Lord's name in vain. Like, like some people say it like Jesus Christ, like, and they, they just, they just play with the name. You understand me? Like you, you don't play with this. You do not play with this because you, you just, you just don't play with it. Mm -hmm. Now, when they saw the boldness, right? Now these men are basically like, bro, you know we killed y'all guy. So they're like, they see now they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated common men. They were astonished and they recognized that they had been with Jesus at that moment. That's when they started to say, Oh, that's his. These where they was at. These was when they ain't died, they ain't run, and they right here. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to leave the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do to these men? for that a notable sign has been performed through them is evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and we cannot deny it. So you guys hear these political conversations. This is what's beautiful about the scripture that we are able to hear these political scriptures and, and they are trying to confer and find like, how can we stop this now? But in order that they may spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. 
But Peter and John answered him, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. Amen. Mm -hmm. They ain't just say, all right, man, all right, just to get up out the room. Like, no, nah, they kept it a hundred. They say, whether it is right to listen to you, other than, like over listening to God, that's, I'm going to leave that to y'all to judge. But I am going to attest to everything that I have heard and seen. Verse 21, and when they had further threatened them, <clears throat> they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all were praising God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. So this man was lame, crippled for over 40 years. They can't say nothing because it's only God that can heal this man. When they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. This is something I always, I always mention, right? It's, I just love the fact that scripture always recognizes the three entities. There is the heavens, there is the earth, and there is the sea. It's always recognized in those three. A lot of us just look at it as one big thing, but these are three different entities. There are three different, like even in the book of Revelations, like give up your dead, oh heavens, give up your dead, oh sea, like, the abyss, like this, there's so much more to life than what we actually see with our two eyes, like what we are actually supposed to. And scripture always gives us these mysteries and we just have to, you know, dive a little deeper to find. Amen. Who through the mouth of our father, David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city, they were gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. So this is for us to understand. These men were bold. These men stood strong in front of the eyes of the individuals, the same men that murdered, crucified Jesus, the Savior, beat him, spit in, spit in his face, make bloodied him, like put him on a cross. These same men did it with no regards, with no regret, with no feeling, no remorse. And they are speaking to Peter and John. So basically now they got an eye out on us. Now they know where we are. They know of our existence. So they can basically come and do the same thing to us, come and arrest us at night like they did Jesus. So these men are still boldly speaking to these men. But what we have to take here, right? Cause I, I tell you guys that the book of Acts is basically gonna be giving us a blueprint of how to, how to basically do this walk that we are on. What we learn here is that they prayed for that boldness. They prayed for God to continuously give them strength, understanding as the scripture says that they read here from David, why did the Gentiles rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. His anointed being those that which he granted the Holy Spirit to, those that which are going out to proclaim the gospel. They are raging, they are, fi they are fighting, they are looking to kill and Peter and the disciples and the apostles are basically just praying, verse 29 again, and now, Lord, look upon their threats. You hear them. Look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness so that we are not afraid when we see these men, so that we are not threatened when we hear they are coming or hear they are plotting against us. 
we are going we pray that you grant us the strength that we are able to continue to speak your word in the presence of our enemies amen boldness they prayed for spiritual boldness so if you have not yet made this a part of your life made this a part of your daily prayers this is something that we have to learn right now today together to pray for spiritual boldness that we are able to proclaim the word of god despite our environment despite who is in the room despite our past despite our shortcomings understanding that god is full of grace and he is continuously using you when you stop you decide to stop god never told you to stop when you turn away you decided to turn away god never pushed you out of his presence we have to start understanding when god has called us to do work we have to work and sometimes when we are discouraged, pray for God to continuously give you spiritual boldness. Amen. Amen. While you stretch out your hand to heal, while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continue to speak the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles, excuse me, were given their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as were owners of lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as, had, as any had need. Thus Joseph, who was also called the apostle Bar Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, sold a field that belongs to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So last point that I want you guys to take from this section here, we, we talked about it last week and I just want to stand on it again. Uh, Sister Emma actually was the one that, you know, gave us great insight to go deeper into it. It is time that we come more together as a family to fellowship with each other. We need to not only fellowship on Saturday, on Sunday or Thursday evenings for this one hour in Bible study. As Christians, as believers, we need to build a community amongst us. We have to be able to have each other at an arm distance, at an arm length that we can reach out at any time and know that my brother's right there, my sister's right there praying for me and I'm praying for them. We need to build this community to be stronger in order to be able to resist the evil one. Because when we come together in this manner, living amongst each other in this manner, we will also hold each other accountable in this manner. We will also be able to strengthen our submission and understand what it means to compromise, what it means to give in, what it means to let go and let God. Because we'll have a brother to lean on, we'll have a sister to lean on. Tough times come. Everybody goes through it. We have seasons every year. It goes up, it goes down. It's a roller coaster. Yet the foundation that which we are laying down here in regards to the word of God in your life is what is going to keep you steady. And if you have that word of God in your life, it is important that you surround yourself with individuals that believe that same word of God because you mm -hmm. will get hit a little harder one season and you're going to need somebody to lean on. And you can't wait till Saturday when you see them at church. You can't wait till Thursday when you get to Bible study. You can't wait till Sunday. You need to know that they are right there today, right there, right then, right now. So I want to encourage you guys to basically build this family up, man. Keep each other in your prayers. As you pray, pray for Emma. As you pray, pray for Esther. As you pray, pray for Esther and his family. Like as you pray, Pray for anybody that comes to mind, comes to spirit. Lindsay, all people, my mother, me, myself. Anytime you are praying for yourself, make sure that you pray for the Youth Believe Ministry. Make sure you pray for all the members. Make sure you pray for the men, the women, the young men, the young women. Just 
keep us all in your spirit at all times so that we can stay in one accord. This is when the gift of prophecy is given to us because we are actually praying for each other. And God will reveal to you things that which are meant to encourage Erica, encourage the individuals that which are having down seasons that they've been trying to hide. And God revealed it to you because he knows you are faithfully praying for them. So let us be you know, more assertive in basically building a community, more intensive on you know being a real family because this is the only way that we can survive in this world in this dark world amen so that's it for today we're going to finish up with chapter three and four um next week we'll get to five and six god willing over the weekend i'll try to drop the two bible studies of chapter one and two and three and four uh for the people that missed it um, but before we end out, does anybody have any thoughts, any questions that they would like to share? Yeah, I just had a just uh, tag off what you said about praying for everybody. Yes, it just it just gave me a nostalgia moment when I was uh when I was a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to like fight a lot when I was in, like elementary school, and it made me think when I used to pray. I used to pray at night, and I will always pray for my enemies. Mm. Just to make sure they get home safe mm. and all that other stuff. Um, one of them is currently no longer with us. He, we ended up becoming really close friends, and then um, he, he passed away uh back in 2018. But when you said to pray for everybody, you like said my name and everything. It made me think about when I was younger and how like I would pray for everybody I came across. I yeah. just as God to protect my friends, my family, and even my enemies. You know, make sure to get home safe and stuff. So it's, it's important, bro, because not not everybody has a praying mama. Like not everybody has a praying grandmama. Some people don't know how to pray themselves. So just knowing that they got people that's actually praying for them when they forget and you know wake up and just get straight to the grind. They don't know. It's important that we are building this community and actually remembering our brothers and sisters in our prayers. Like we have to do that. Man, that's crazy though. It's like to to think about like at twelve years old that I that I had that instinct, that's kind of, that's just kind of, I don't know how to explain it, but it's crazy. You know, it's a calling on your life, man. Like, you know, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's called intercession. You know, it's not really a gift. It's actually something that which you are born with, something that you have. So standing in the gap, as they say, so you having that in you, man, you just continue it, bro. Like it's no, it's never too late to tap back into it. Let's see. Well, let's see. Yeah, hopefully I haven't had that instinct or that feeling like in a long time. Well, let's Honestly, pray that this conversation and this was maybe everything I just said was for you, bro. It was for somebody. But I just pray yeah. that we all understand what we are, what we, what this life is about. Because we all know how hard it is on an individual basis. So you can only imagine what the, your brother's going through, what your sister's going through. So just letting them know that, man. You know, I prayed for you last night. Like when you see him on Saturday, and I've been praying for you all week. Letting them know that you have their back on a spiritual level is is big, man. And we all yeah. need it. We all, that's better than money. You could slide somebody a hundred dollars, and they gonna just spend it on some shoes or spend it on something crazy. But <laughs> same person that would have gave me that hundred dollars came to me and say, "Man, I've been praying for you all week. Like you've been heavy on my spirit. That's encouraging, bro. It's encouraging." No, nah, that is, man. That definitely will give me an uplifting day. Somebody yeah, told me I've been in a So, like, let's 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 share that to others. Like, be the be the change you want to see. Okay. All right, fans. Nobody else. Ain't no anybody have any prayer requests? Mm -hmm. All right, let's close our eyes and end out in prayer. My Father, my God, my Savior, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your strength, your mercy, and kindness. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your love. We thank you for where you have taken us from and where you are taking us to. We thank you, Lord, for this amazing study. We thank you for the words, my Lord, that are written here to leave for us that we are able to continuously look into the mysteries, my Lord, and find all that which you have left behind for us, all of the challenges that we go through and understanding how you brought our brothers and our sisters through. Encourage, my Lord, to have faith in all matters. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, and ask that you let all that we learn in your name dwell in our heads and our hearts throughout our lives. For it is in your name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name.
because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. Our Father in heaven, I look be that name. Our kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts. We forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And God's people say, God bless y'all. Have a great night. Love y'all.